Hello community, we have a new form of fine tuning developed. You say, unbelievable, how did it happen? Well, you know, it is great. We have fine tuning, fine tuning is available everywhere. I just take the unslot documentation here for Q1. This is the latest model that I fine tuned here, for example. They tell you exactly how to do this, how to fine tune this. Of course, optimized for their methodology and their infrastructure. You have here all the information that you need. You see exactly the VRAM requirement that you are looking for. And they provide you here with a notebook. Let's have a look at the notebook. So here you see Onslaught provides us here a beautiful call-up notebook. Everything you need for the fine-tuning of a Q1.3. Here you have here the installation here. Do this only on a call-up notebook. Otherwise use pip install Onslaught if you work somewhere else. Then you have your 4-bit Onslaught models. You see the 1.7, the 4B, the 8B, the 14B, and it goes up to the 32B with 4-bit. Otherwise, this is now the hard limitation here for a call-up. Or, yeah, then you have the model name. You have here fine-tuning load in 8-bit, load in 4-bit. You go here with 4-bit, of course, because we have here very limited memory. VRAM available only. We run through this, and then this is it. And then, of course, the next trick is here, of course, use a LoRa adapter. Yeah? So only need to update one to about yeah, 3, 5% of all the parameters. So again, we reduce the complexity. We make it simpler. We have an oversimplification. We cut off here the real intelligent pieces so that it fits here on a gaming GPU. Beautiful, you know all of this. What's really nice, they have here a loft queue. This, I have a particular video on Loft Queue. You should definitely try it out in a Loft Queue. Loft Queue is an advanced methodology, but never mind. And then we have the data preparation. Yeah? And you know, we have in Q and we have in the special image of expert model, we have a reasoning and a non reasoning mode. So, therefore, they have now two particular data sets the open mat reasoning and the Maxime Laban fine tune uh, data set. But of course, we have to convert this. So if you look at the reasoning data set or non-reasoning data set, great. Then we have to convert them in a conversational format. Yes, you know this rule, user assistant content, great. If you look at this, yeah, so this is the first example from those data sets. And then you use here a function to fix up the format for this specific data set. So if you have a look at this, it looks like like this now, beautiful. Then let's select 25% reasoning and 75% chat based. Beautiful. Let's sample the reasoning data set 25% and then combine the data set. Yes, you notice. Know and then finally, we train the model. Yes, here we are. Fine tune now the model. And you're not going to believe we use the supervised fine tuning trainer from Hugging Face. Our good old trends for four or five years now is always the same methodology. So you are absolutely familiar with this. This is the logic from Hugging Face, Adam Optimizer. Great seed, the case scheduler, everything that you know. And that's it. And yeah, trainer dot train your normal commander, then you see. Off we go. Beautiful. So this is the notebook available and provided to you by Unslot for Training Q and Suite. Coming back now, we want to open up this video and say, how can we optimize the fine-tuning process itself? Because we know it's not really working well. Yeah? There is now a problem, and you know, this is the difference between in-context learning and fine-tuning. And they access that information differently. In-context learning seems to operate more dynamically, building a temporal knowledge representation within the context windows that supports flexible reasoning like a reversal and this is what we're looking for now you want to be that your llm is able to reason here or have syllogisms that are activated that the system can handle this it doesn't break down however standard fine tuning might encode information much more rigidly optimizing primarily for predicting the exactly the trained sequence nothing else not no understanding just go bit by bit by bit leading here to failures on simple variation like a reversal. This means we have a perfect overfitting to the surface form of logic or directionality. So, I think it's fascinating though that the same LLM can exhibit different generalization capabilities depending, depending on the learning methodology. Either we go with ICL or with fine tuning. And unfortunately, fine-tuning shows surprisingly poor generalization 
on tasks like relational reversals or logical deductions based only on the fine-tuning data. Even when a model can perform such reasoning, the very same LLM can do this in ICL. And yes, you understand already what I want to tell you. Of course, we have literature for this here. This is here the reversal curse. And this is here by Berglund from 2024. And highlighted here, especially this reversal curse, where fine-tuning on A is B fails to generalize to B is A. And here you have the complete understanding that the code is available. It just fails. Fine-tuning is not able to do this. So the motivation is now to understand the differences systematically and device methodology to improve now the fine-tuning robustness, given that we know that a model can do this with in-context learning. And we will look have, we will have a look at adaptation methodology, generalization methodology, inductive biases, and data augmentation techniques. Yes, of course, this is the solution. A little bit more in detail, rephrasing reversal, syllogistic inferences, compositional generalization, and category holdout. And you see here the definition of those technical terms. Just let me focus here on syllogism, because this is so important if we do reasoning, especially in science. You have to have a, a system that is able to solve a syllogism. In finance, in medicine, everywhere, you need these systems that are able to handle this. So what is it? You know, classical example here, premise one, all humans are mortal. Premise two, Socrates is a human. So therefore the conclusion, Socrates is mortal. If the premises are true and the logical structure is valid, the conclusion must also be true. And if an LLM is not able to handle this, why do I need this LLM then? This is exactly why I need AI agents for. Now, in this study here, this new study by Google, of course, who else? They used here this now with nonsense word, like glon, trough, and jump, so that we have now an understanding of the logical structure itself without relying on any prior knowledge about those words. So you will find now here a modification to test the pure logical functionality. Premise one is this, premise two is this, and conclusion tested is now what you see here on the screen. So you see, the relationship between those is now the element connecting now two separate pieces of information logically. The question is how we do this. What is the methodology we can apply? But you might say, hey, wait a minute. If in-context learning can perform this desired generalization, like a reversal or a deduction, that the pure fine-tuned struggles with, why then not use the model's own ICL capabilities to generate specific examples of those successful generalizations based on the fine-tuning training data? Well, that's exactly the way we're going to forward. So, when you fine-tune an LLM, and you know fine-tune is really, you have, you touch here the internal weights, the tensor structures, you modify it given here the specific examples. So, problem is, in fine-tuning, the model learns these examples too literally. We're focusing only on the surface pattern. It does not understand the meaning. It does not understand logic derivation. It does not understand syllogism. It's not in the training data. So it might learn premise one, but fail to reliably deduce the conclusion because the specific statement wasn't part of the training data set. So it learned the pieces, but it had no idea, no intelligence, not necessarily know how to combine them flexibly using here the fine-tuned knowledge now. So what is the solution? The same LLM without any weight changes, if we go to in-context learning now, we provide here the facts in the prompt, ICL can do it. So this suggests that ICL has a more dynamic way of processing the relationship presented on the fly, of course, remember, within the context window only. So guess what? The main solution is so simple. Take your original fine-tuned training data set, Feed this data as context to a powerful base LLM. Yes, must be above a certain threshold LLM size that you can really utilize the in-context learning capability of 
more advanced AI system. Perform it now, this LLM, to perform the kind of reasoning you want the fine-tuned model to do. So I say, hey, what are the reverse of those facts in the fine-tuning data set? Or what can be logically deducted from those premises I showed you in the pure fine-tuning data set? And the LLM, using now its ICL brain, generates the answer. The correct reversal and the correct syllogism conclusion in its ICL mode. And this is fascinating. So in the fine-tuning mode, the LLM could not solve this. Imagine, we went down to the tensor weight. We, we had a complete learning process. We went through all the different layers of our transform architecture. And it was not able to learn this. And then we just go with a quick and dirty in-context learning where we just put the information in a prompt. And now the LLM is able to do this. It's one of the unsolved mysteries. So... LLM using ICL generates the answer. Beautiful, what we do, we collect those answers. We are essential to correct examples of the generalization you want. And these explicit examples of reversal and syllogism conclusion, we feed them back into the fine-tuning data set that we started with, so we augment our data set. And then you're never going to guess what we're going to do. We fine-tune now the LLM on this expanded augmented training data set. Because now it contains the original facts from the fine-tuning plus the explicit ICL examples generated by the very same LLM of the generalization derived from those facts. So we let the LLM do the work for us to generate here the missing training data. So we have now an expanded augmented training data set where the ICL intelligence provides now here the missing data for the fine-tuning mode. Absolutely unbelievable. So what we have, we have now built control synthetic data sets. And as I told you, careful design this with nonsense words, but also with very relational structures. This is the key to isolate a generalization phenomena from the pre-training confounds. And you know, if you ask me here on my test that I run here on the new LLMs like QN, why you have such a strange test and the names are just nonsense names. Now you understand what I've done now for one year. Now we have a beautiful publication by Google, and now Google is also using here the nonsense word. You see, there was value to it. So let's have a look at the new study. This is here by Google DeepMind and Stanford University. From May 2025, on the generalization of LLM from in-context learning and fine-tuning a control study, and they demonstrate here that in-context learning's more flexible reasoning, especially on reversal and syllogism that we need for reasoning, logic, can be effectively transferred to a fine-tuning via a simple data augmentation, significantly boosting here the fine-tuning robustness of our system. And this is great. Because you know what? What we had until now, okay, pre-trained, yeah, beautiful, and then for reversals only, the fine-tuning, zero, zero percent performance, zero percent accuracy. It was not able to do with the classical fine-tuning data set a reversal. But now, if you understood that we could do everything, you see, close to, yeah, I don't know, 98 percent, with in-context learning, so we use now the in-context learning mode, to generate for the particular fine-tuning data set on medicine, physics, mathematics, finance, whatever you have, those things. And you know what? Then we create an augmented data set and then we fine-tune here the model on this augmented data set and we have in you know, augmented fine-tuning performance now. And look, oh yeah, it's sometimes it even surpasses here the pure ICL performance. This is what we wanted. So fine-tuning with the data augmented with in-context inferences yield is similar high performance. Isn't this beautiful? I think this is the only graph you need. Yeah, you can have reversals and syllogisms here. Then divided here on this more richly structured semantic data set that we generated now. So you see now, okay. Augmented fine-tuning is really the best of both worlds here with these new generated pre-training data sets. 
So let's come here to an end. Let's have here the insights here of the study. And they tell us the authors across all data set, all tasks tested here on the reversals and the syllogism, the standard fine tuning generalized significantly worse in any case than in context learning. This new augmented fine tuning consistently improved over the standard fine tuning, often reaching or surpassing here the in context learning performance on the original data and on the semantic structure benchmark. ICL and augmented fine tuning were substantially better than the standard fine tuning. They go on here a little bit more detailed. Here, generalization on category holders remain challenging even for augmented fine tuning. The sentence splitting improved here the augmented fine tuning performance. ICL performance degraded significantly when real names were replaced with nonsense words in the reversal curse task. Suggesting now, and this is interesting, that ICL benefits from familiar entities or familiar priors. So it has an idea if I give you a particular name like King Henry V, you know this might be have in history somewhere in the in England, in the United Kingdom, one of the kings of somewhere long time ago. You see immediately a background information, a content information. So if you have pure nonsense word, you lose out of this. So they need here this background information. And what I told you, smaller LLMs, real small, below 7 billion, showed less ICL benefit. They are not able to do this. We need to have a minimum threshold of size of available free trainable parameter that ICL kicks in and is available for us to benefit from this. Great. Overall summary, I think standard fine tuning sometimes fails because it learns the explicit data too rigidly, does not automatically generalize well to implicit variation like, as I showed you, a reversal or a deduction based on that data. And we know ICL can do it. So the new idea uses here the model's own, and this is the amazing thing, in context reasoning ability to generate the explicit examples of those variations that we are missing here then adds them to the fine-tuning data set, and this forces here the fine-tuning process to learn these generalization patterns directly, making here the final model much better at both of them. Isn't this fantastic? And you know what? Why haven't we found out about this earlier? Why now? Why in May 2025 that we discover we can merge ICL capabilities with standard fine-tuning capabilities? Why have we not before understood this? Why we have to come up now with these two different thinking modes, fine-tuning with the modification of the complete tensor weights or ICL with not at all touching any of the tensor weights and has a better flexibility in its logical deduction? Why is it only happening now? Okay, okay, we accept it, but hey, if you like this video, why not subscribe and I'll see you in my next one.